that are totally disinterested in me. If I had some grain in my hand, you wouldn't be disinterested, would you? Yeah, I know, that's what I say. You see, I've got one here, which has been, it's got the words kitchen fucked written on it. Now see, what am I supposed to do with that? You know when you get to those jobs and you get there on day one and you just don't know where to start? <laughs> it's kind of where I am here. I just don't know where to begin. There's a fuse board apparently right below this. We've got to move it. In fact, I'll show you quickly. This, these are the tails that come in. In fact, Nom Nom's here. Say hi, Nom Nom. Hey. So hey, hey. these are the tails that come in from outside. The board, there's a, an out, outdoor box. So it comes into this Henley block and I believe it just goes into these tails straight down to the board. And the board is literally just under the ceiling. But at some point it's been extended poorly by the looks of it. So I've got to, we've got to move the board. See where the boiler is over there. This is basically going to be, um, there's going to be, the board is going to go somewhere next to the boiler over there. Um, and we've got to extend, we've got to work out what all of this is. And we're just basically going to extend it behind where you are, where you're looking at me. And we're going to extend, we're going to basically run all the cables in the eaves over there. And it's all going to be boxed in afterwards. I don't know what else to say because I don't know where to start really, to be honest. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's like, I've got a 10 mil here, which has been split. I don't know, that comes from the fuse board. I actually don't know where these two go. I think this is an, one electric shower. I think that, I don't know, actually. Okay. Right, what we'll do, the weather for the rest of the week is supposed to be pretty shit, isn't it? So if we put that armour cable in, there's a bit, we've got a 10 mil armoured, we've got to run down to a shed at the bottom of the garden. Be Let's strange. do that today because for the rest of the week it's going to be raining. So yeah, and then it'll be cooler in here if it's raining. Yeah. So right, we're going to be outside, we'll see you in a sec. What we're going to do, I'll show you outside in a second, but basically if I drill a, a hole in this corner somewhere here, we can just run the 10 mil in because the plan is there's going to be a false floor here because you see all these central heating pipes not the neatest job in the world whoever did it but this floor they're boarding straight on top of this floor but we can't board in here so they're just going to see this i think this is going to be the height of the floor in here so all of this in here is just going to be open we can just run our cabling neatly at the back so i'm going to drill a 10 mil hole no a 20 mil hole there and we can pull our armor cable in i'm not good with things which have got more than four legs so, yeah, I'm, I'm not good with them, to be honest. They're not my, yeah. Well, yeah, it's dead. Yeah, he's dead. No, well, he's dead now. I don't care if you keep that on camera. If I get lots of people bashing me for spider killing. Look, I don't like them. I don't care. You can all say I'm a sap. Don't care. All right, I, I think this is fine. We don't need to go all the way down there. Well, I can see sunlight, so that's a good sign. Let's yep. have a look outside, see what's come out. Hold us 60 meters from cities, 10 mil three core. It's amazing how expensive cable is. This run here, this 60 meters, nearly 300 quid from cities, just for just for this carrying it all out, you know, 250, I think it was. And I know I get a good price from cities. They don't, they don't overcharge, but, like my customers are like, oh, it costs that much? I'm like, yeah, it does. <laughs> it's expensive. Can't do anything about it. It's just, hello, Stanley. Stanley the cat. Follows us everywhere we go. Okay, so what we're going to do, this is the armoured you saw me rolling out a second ago, which Nay was pulling down to the bottom of this garden. What we're going to do, uh, the customers put these railway sleepers in and they put this capping over the top. So we're going to tuck this underneath, underneath here, and we're going to cleat it in behind here just so it's out the way rather than it's, I don't want to start digging down 60 meters of garden so we're just going to cleat it behind this here where it's it's pretty protected behind here it should be all right and this will go I'll show you now this goes all the way down here and then down to here so it's going to come along here we've got to get it into this shed I'm not sure how it's going to happen yet I think the customer is going to put a post here and we'll just clip, clip up onto the shed and I think it's going to go somewhere in this corner here I think I don't know 100% yet we're going to work that out but I want to get the cable in the house first but that's somewhere in here and then there'll be a light fitting up on this post and that's basically it they look totally disinterested in me if I had some grain in my hand you wouldn't be disinterested would you
Yeah, I know, that's what I say. Me and the camera guy took the bikes down here today and they drove, seeing as it's quite a, quite a nice part of the world that we're in today. So if you're uh, actually doing a motor vlog and I put a post on Instagram with any questions that you want to ask. Yeah, so like those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, what we do is that when we do a motor vlog, we'll put a picture up um, of us and then you can just ask any questions and we answer those questions on the motor vlog. That tends to be the easier way of doing it rather than sifting through like 400 comments trying to pick out the ones which are motor vlog related. So hit me up on Instagram, links here now. Okay. Maximum health and safety. Ovi. Ovi, OBS. Go for a penny washer. Oh, you need a washer? Mm hmm. Uh huh. You just dropped all the washers. No, I got more. That's why I didn't put them all in there. Because I had a feeling. Fucking hell, you think we've got enough? That was a 60 metre reel. And I looked at it, when I first looked at this to price this, I thought, ah, 50 metres will be enough. You know, no need to, no need to have any more. Fuck, 60 metres, we barely got enough to get to the board. I mean, you could, on this, what we could have done, I'm running the armoured all the way to the board, but what we could have done, this could have terminated outside in a whisker box, and then I could have bought a, tw a 10 mil T&E inside, but I might as well just take this armoured all the way to the board. It's not hurt. Pull... The reason the board's moving over by the boiler is because this here is going to be a bathroom. In fact, I'll show you, hang on. So you come up the stairs here, and there'll be a little landing door here, where Naomi stood, there'll be another door, and this will be a landing. There'll be, a, I think, there's like a little, there'll be a cupboard here for storage, and then you'll open the door into this bedroom, and there'll be a bedroom. So this will all be a bedroom, and then same again that side. That's why I can't put the board here because it's going to be in the bathroom. So I've got to move it. I mean, you could put it in a cupboard or something, but it just makes more sense if I move it. And over here, this door will open here. I think the bathroom, because we can't do anything about the boiler, they're going to have to put some sort of cupboard around this. I think the bathroom is going in that, that side there, I think, but they're boxing this in. So the board is going to go just here, I believe. That's mm. the plan. In fact, you're stood on it. That's it there. Yeah. So that's the board. It looks like a really big oversized board for what is basically a domestic house, but there's actually quite a lot of circuits going in here. So let's unbox this and see what we've got on the other side of this, because there is... We've got to run another cable out for a changeover switch for a generator in one of those boxes that you've got. So I'll show you, let me, lay, two seconds, let me lay this out and we'll come back in a sec. So this is the board that's going in. It, it looks a little oversized, I admit. This is one of the things I do like about the Schneider boards is that everything you just bolt, if you want something, you just bolt it on. So like I need to, rather than having a smooth, a smooth plate, I want the ones with all the holes in because I want to put a piece of um, Paxlin and trunking underneath. And if you need it, you just literally, it just bolts on and you just get the configuration that you want, which I do, that's one thing I do like about them. It's a little bigger than what I was wanting. I get it. It'll be fine. At least no one can say that we've not accounted for future whatever. There's plenty of space for future expansion. But no, basically, main switch there. Um, and then what they're having here, the reason we're fitting this expansion box at the bottom is because there's, there's going to be a generator changeover switch. They're really cool. Um, if you haven't fitted one, they're really a neat bit. To, very simple idea, but it works really well. So if you look in the regs, there is a clause somewhere which says you can't have a generator and a public supply operating at the same time, feeding the same house. So you're not allowed it. So they've come up with this. It's really neat. You can buy these for about 30 quid, 35 quid, so about somewhere around there. Really good bits of kit. And basically, you put your public supply on the left-hand side, generator incoming on the right. It's basically two double pole switches, but one of them is turned upside down and bolted together. So when you, when you shut it off, it switches on the other one. So they never operate at the same time and they just use those bridging links underneath. It's really, really, it's very clever. So that's going in the bottom here. And then we've got to run a six mil, we've got to run a six mil cable, a six mil armoured out to the generator set, which is outside. He hasn't got, he's got the generator. We just haven't, we, he, it's not ready yet for various reasons. And then there's a contactor there for the shower. There's a um, 10 mil cable we're running in for a shower. Um, so we're going to do the same thing again with the light switch. We'll just have a, a little six amp double pole switch downstairs and that'll just switch the shower on and off rather than having those big hoofing 50 amp switches. This will be the point where everyone's like, oh shoot, what's wrong with 
just fitting a BG Jewel RCD board. I can feel it already. Feel the eyes burning in the back of your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's lucky for me, I don't give a fuck. A few inches later. The plan's changed. Customers come back, we're moving at this side of the house. A lot of people were asking how I'm getting on with the Bosch tools, because I've had them about a year now. I do like them. Uh, the only one which I really didn't like was the stereo, that 50 watt stereo. That was the only one I just, I wouldn't recommend. Everything else, I do like it, I think it's pucker. 12 seconds later. No idea how to use this, we're here to help. <laughs> yeah, if you have no idea how to use this, we're here to help. <laughs> what is this product? This is an example of um, Ching Chong Pong and Ho Hing Hong and stuff. Um, I've got this security system. This is actually coming up in probably the following video from now, so it'll be a week from now. Um, we have got to fit this here. And this was like a really cheap, this, this was just a budget one I bought, and it was like 250 quid. But it's like four cameras, hard drive, little TV. Uh, you know, uh, I bought it just to see how good or how crap it was because it just seems like really good value. Um, so I have got to fit this. Actually, the customer here wants it. I can already feel the comment, oh, it's junk, it's garbage. It's the same as cars, you know. If everybody wanted the finest quality, we'd all go and drive the Mercedes-Benz, but, you know, the average person drives a Ford Escort, you know. It's, everything has a mark, there's a market for everything. And maybe not everybody can afford or wants to have the absolute, you know, latest and greatest. Just a budget system will do. But they certainly don't look bad. Time will tell. They're coming up in the next video, so you've seen me fitting those. It's a wireless system. Ah, there's the antenna for it. We shall see. I have an open mind. Mm. Using our power bank to power a fan just to keep cool in this weather because it is uh, a little on the tropical side. Many an electrician has got busted knuckles from doing this. I tried. Somebody said you can buy an SDS attachment, but I think I left it in my van. You had, I was about to say, and I know where it is. It's on your front dash. Yeah, it's on the front of the dash. I, I left put it, it there. Because I don't know where it went. I did check because a couple of you were saying, oh, I'll just use an SDS adapter and I'll leave it on the screen now. And I tried it in this drill, and this drill is quite chunky. This is 2.8 joules. It's for a cordless drill, that's not bad at all. But I just didn't, it just didn't have the gump to drive. I think you need a big SDS to drive the rods in because the theory is actually really good. You just literally sit it on top and you just hammer, you just put it into hammer only. If it was a main, be a big SDS, yeah. it would be all right. But uh, just do it with a hammer. Two thousand years later. That reminds me, there are a couple of people saying when you when you're driving rods into the ground and stuff, how do you know you're not gonna hit a utility service or something? I mean, to be honest, most of it is just I don't want to say the words potluck, but it kind of is and it kind of isn't. You've seen me doing videos where I put a rod outside the front of a house, terraced houses, it's super common. You just put the rods by the front door and you can download the charts for your street. Um, I, I'll try and leave a link to it if I can remember what it is. And basically you can have a chart for your street and it will show you where your gas, water, all your utilities are in the street. And at least you can get a gauge of where, it's still not 100%, but it's better than nothing. But here, I mean, it's just fields all around us. So I mean, the likelihood of me hitting something here is, I mean, it's a million to one, but. I did that age old thing. I bought aftermarket batteries. I tell everybody don't do it because it's just a waste of money and it is. Because all the batteries out of my Bosch gear have been nicked. I don't know who nicked them, someone did. So I bought some, I thought, oh, I should buy these cheapo ones. Fully charged, you put it in. Fuck all. Fast forward a little bit. Rod's now in, and this is how I've done it. This is the way that I normally do it. So you've got a copper, you've got a copper plated rod which goes in, and then you've got this little bar, this brass, uh, this brass clamp here. I substitute it. It seems to be a, an area of contention among some people, which I beg to differ. But I substitute the brass bolt, which is this one here. So I take that out and I substitute it with my own bolt because these do snap. Contrary to what people might say and contrary to people thinking that I'm over tightening it, when you buy these bolts, there's no torque settings, there's nothing. Now, I'm not, I'm not gonna start dicking about ringing manufacturers for a bolt with no brand on it. I mean, sorry, I'm not. I'm not doing these up excess, I'm not going you know, gangam style on these, but these, it's just a soft metal, you know? I swap it for a stainless steel bolt. Now I do that for 
the principal reason that when you put, imagine you put this brass bolt, right? Let's say you put it in there, like I've done, I've put the, I've put the stainless bolt in, but let's just say you substitute it and I put that brass bolt back in. Now, when you cover that up and you put your little earth tag on, walk away, who is ever gonna open that up to check? You know, no one's going to, you know? It's just people won't check. So there's every, the reason I substitute it is because that will, it will snap. Contrary to what people think, they do. I've had, I've seen it enough times on jobs I have worked on and jobs I haven't worked on. And if it snaps, it's gonna snap in there. No one's ever gonna see it, which is why I like to substitute them. But anyway, that's how I've done it. So bolt goes in, 10 mil crimp, and it just goes into a bit of copex. He's cladding this, which is why I've left, I've left this off the ground because he's got to finish this ground with something. I don't know what he's finishing it with yet, but that's why I've left a little bit of clearance there. Uh, and that's why I have, I've left this armoured here because he wants me, to, I've left deliberately left some slack here because he wanted me to leave slack because he's got to finish this. So, and then that just basically tightens up like that. I've said this before in many videos, you can buy earth boxes like this. And I've just used a 20 mil turn box with a, with a weatherproof gasket, but you can buy different brands. And they're literally, that's literally all it is. And I've just made it myself for like a quarter of the price. It's just 20 mil turn box with a bit of Copex and a, and a safety electrical connection tag on it, so. Well, between between me bashing that rod in and going up, see what I mean? This is what I've got to work with. You see, look, I say something perfectly innocent, I'm bashing that rod in there and you start laughing. Sexually innuendos, we stopped this, remember? Well, between me installing the earth rod and trying to do this, the heat here is you get to 12 and the heat is so debilitating. So I've come down here just to give, I'll give a hand, but actually I'm just sort of watching it's really. It's more of a cheer. Yeah, I'm cheering it's you like on. moral support. It's that so every warm. Every boss should give. Yeah. You hear that. <laughs> but we're almost done. That timber armor, we're going to cleat that down inside of the woodwork here. We'll cleat it down later on. Mm -hmm. um, and that timber earth is the one which you saw going outside. And Mom's just putting in the light switch and a double socket. I think it looks so pretty. It does look neat. I, I was actually just going to take it, I was literally just going to do it surface, but you've done it in coat. It's very neat. I like it. Look I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a, bit, it's a bit overkill. Yeah, a little banjo and everything, look. It's very nice. Do you know what we've done yet? Well, I can't even remember really. We're basically signing off on this, aren't we? Yeah, so, so we've managed to do the socket. We've put the switch in. We've got the light here. We ran the armoured. It's irritated from the rod outside. It looks pretty. Let's get the fuck out of here. That's near enough what she said, yeah. <laughs> I will just leave it at that, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> no need to re-record, that is fine. All right, there we go. Done. <laughs> that's the five ton Iveco, and that's the three and a half ton Transit. I am torn between which one to get. I like the Transit, I, there's something, but then I look at the five ton Iveco, <laughs> and I am, I'll be honest, I am smitten. I mean, it's beautiful engineering. I mean, if you look at how beautifully it's, I mean, it's so beautifully put together. And this is the bigger one. This is the little small one here. Renault again, Renault Master. But this is the smaller platform with a little one man bucket. But it's a neat little, I mean, it's very neat the way they do it. They just cut the back, you lose the back doors and you get an extra payload. This has still got half a ton payload, which is impressive when you consider the Iveco I was looking at the other day, it's only got 200 kilos. 